When it comes to pen testing wireless networks, especially WPA2 personal, it might surprise you initially how fast you can actually attack and have access to a network if there is a poor password in place. So this whole handshake capture process that we're gonna do relies on this poor password. If there's poor passwords, we're gonna get in all day. So let's go ahead and just start with this. First things first, we've plugged in our wireless card and we need to actually set it up here. So just go ahead and go to player and you should have removable devices. Just come down here and we're gonna go ahead and just say connect. So here's my, my device. I'm gonna say connect to host, say okay. And that should get you connected. So the way to check that is we're gonna go into a terminal and we're just going to type in iwconfig, just like ifconfig, but the W stands for wireless. Now we see here that WLAN zero exists and we're gonna go ahead and start with our attack. So the first thing we need to do to do this is we need to place our card into what's called monitor mode. So what monitor mode does is allows our wireless card to perform monitoring of all the incoming traffic. And that's going to allow us to eavesdrop, you know, listen in and hopefully gather that handshake that we're after. So what we're gonna do here is first, we're gonna use a tool called Airmon NG and we're gonna type in check kill. Check kill is going to allow us to check for any processes that are running and you see one was running and it's gonna kill those processes that interfere with what we're about to try to do. Now that that process is out of the way or possible multiple processes, we're gonna go ahead and run this again and we're gonna say start and we're gonna say WLAN zero like that. And you should see it start up your monitor mode on your interface. So it takes just a second and you can see it says monitor mode enabled, station mode disabled. So now it went from WLAN zero to WLAN zero mon, meaning monitor. And we can confirm that with iwconfig. And you can see now that WLAN zero mon is now active. So we need to find the wireless network we want to attack. And this is typically given to us by a client. They'll give you the SSIDs so that you know what's in scope and what you want to attack. So we're just going to search the area around us and see what's there and where the network that we want to specifically attack is. And we use a tool called Arrow Dump. It's all in the same suite here. And we're just gonna say WLAN zero mon. So we come in here and you can see all of the devices around us start to populate. Let me make this bigger here so we can see everything. And you can see that if we look through here, um, we have the following. We have our uh, we have our access point BSSIDs, which is just the MAC address of the access point. We have the power level here, which the lower the number here, the lower the negative number, the closer we are to that device. So negative 11 is really close to us. My, my wireless card is actually sitting on top of the router that we're attacking or the access point we're attacking. And we also see um, if we're getting any beacons or data back from this, which this is not connected to the internet, um, there's not a lot of traffic going on right now, so I'm not expecting to see anything happening. Uh, just a little bit of data, if anything, coming through. There is one user attached to this, as we talked about in the last video. Um, so we're going to generate a little bit of traffic on our own since nothing's happening at the moment. So we got the, we've got the TP link here. This is the one we want to attack. And we also see the channel, which we're on channel six. If you don't know anything about wireless channels, uh, you should definitely read up on them. Wireless channels being, I think one through 14, but the big ones are one, six and 11 as they don't have any overlap. And I think 2.4 gigahertz, at least for five gigahertz, it might be a little bit different. Um, so here we have that, we have the type here, we have WPA2 and they're all pre-shared keys, which is pretty expected for a residential area. Um, and then you might even see, I saw an open network come through as well. And then it even tries to pull in some, some guest networks or some networks that are, so here's like a guest network. It also tries to pull in networks that are, uh, hidden. So you might see like this length of 21 and it might actually be a hidden network that people don't know about, but just because you have a hidden network out there doesn't mean that it's actually hidden. It just takes a little bit of. Uh, patients like this just to wait around and to find it. 
So I'm going to hit control C and stop this process. And now we've identified the TP link and we've identified some information that we need. So what we're after here is we need to narrow this down. Now we've found the channel. We're going to narrow it down just a little bit. So we're going to run arrow dump again. And this time we're going to say dash C for the access point channel, which we are on channel six. And we're going to say dash dash BSSID. And we're going to capture the MAC address here of the access point. Go ahead and paste that in. And lastly, we need to specify a file name for where we're going to be capturing this. I'm just going to call this capture. And we need to specify our interface, which is WLAN zero mon. And this is going to take this, trigger this specific or a capture information on this specific device. And it's going to store it in this capture file. So I'm going to hit enter. You should see items coming through. And you should see the workstation that I have attached here, right? I have one workstation. And what we can see, if you were testing an actual network, you would see a bunch of different workstations here. And what we're waiting on now is we're capturing data. And you see a little bit of data coming through. And we're waiting to capture enough data or capture this handshake that comes through. And you'll see it come up and it'll be right here. It'll say handshake captured. We're trying to get that four way handshake. Well, we can speed this process along with what is called a deauth attack or a deauthorization attack. What that means is we're going to temporarily disassociate a client with a wireless network. We're going to kick somebody off the wireless is what it boils down to. And what that does is when the client reassociates, this handshake is passed out. And that's the handshake that we're looking to capture. So we're going to go ahead and open up a new terminal. And I'm going to show you how to kind of speed this process along. Now, you might need to deauth a different user. So you might have to pick your users. And I've, I've had times where I've been deauthing and nothing's happening. Uh, and you just kind of have to wait for the right person or somebody to be close to you. I was in a parking lot once, and um, I ended up cap capturing a handshake waiting on somebody getting out of their car. I found somebody pop up as they got out of their car. They associated with the network, and I was able to deauth them and get uh, what I needed. So this little deauth attack is nice, but you have to kind of be patient with it sometimes, although this one should work for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this deauth attack with a tool called Air Replay. And we're going to say a dash zero, and that just means deauth. We're going to specify one, which means we're just going to run this one time. And we're going to say a dash A. We're going to paste in this MAC address of the AP. So you should already have that copied and just paste it in there. We also need to specify the client we're attacking. So we're attacking this station right here. So we'll go ahead and capture the station. Might need to grab it the other way. Might even need to type it in. It should be copyable. There we go. Um, so here we go, paste it here. And then we just need to type in the interface one more time, which is WLAN zero mon. And I want you to kind of just watch this. So let's see if it pops up. We're going to run this attack. Just hit enter. It should send a bunch of deauths. You can see all the beacons coming through here um, and the data and then the handshake. There it is. We got it. Okay. So I'm going to admit a little bit of video magic editing. This was not the first time that I had to run this deauth attack. And so the screen might look a little bit different because I had to run this a couple times. Um, but the process is here. You might have to run this deauth as as I've mentioned, uh, not just against one time, you know, one person, but you might have to find another client or another one. But if you're patient enough, you can get this. Now, another thing to mention, too, is you don't want to keep deauthing the same client over and over and over because you are kicking them off the Internet just for a short second of time. So they just have to disconnect and reconnect and it's it's really quick but you don't want to like keep denying service to a specific user because uh, that could cause issues in the environment right so you want to make sure that you kind of just pick and choose your battles and you're patient with this and if you sit around enough and you capture enough data eventually you will get the WPA handshake without having to deauth but you're in a timed assessment most of the time and you have to actually you know speed this along a little bit. So we've got the we've got the handshake. Let's go ahead and just hit control C. And I have a couple, probably a few different capture files because I had to run this a couple times. So let's just look at what's what's here. I've got capture one and capture two. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this capture file here, this dot cap. Now we're going to use that dot cap file to actually attempt to 
uh, crack this handshake. And I've gone ahead and I just went out, let me show you here. I just made a word list and I just called it word list. And what I did was I took just 100 bad passwords and just threw the password in here um, as part of it. So you could do the same thing. You can just go ahead and, you know, if you know your AP's password, then go ahead and just throw it in the word list. This is just proof of concept. Uh, in a real world situation, you would, you would take this and you would try to crack this uh, with either what I'm about to show you or you can use Hashcat to crack this as well. Uh, there's a lot of different methods you can use and you'll just try to see if you can't pull down this uh, this password with a nice word list. So from here, we're gonna run a tool called aircrack and we're gonna specify the word list, which I just called mine word list. And then a dash B for the AP MAC address, which we have right here. All right. And then we also have the capture file, which for me is capture 02.cap. And then let's go ahead and hit enter on that. And you can see it found the passphrase really fast. Um, I only had 101 words in there, but it took just it took less than a second, right? Um, so this is my default password for my router. If I would have left this on my router, hands down, this one is pretty easy to pop. Uh, we run all sequences of numbers um, because phone numbers are very, very common for businesses to use and people to use. We also, if you're attacking a company, it's always good to try to uh, use their name in some way or another and try to, you know, substitute, for example, an I for a one or one for an I, uh, zero for an O kind of deal. And you'll be surprised how easy you get in. Street address, same thing. A lot of companies just use what's familiar to them. Um, you could go on their website and pull down word list and, and kind of attack that way too. Those are a bunch of different strategies that you have available to you. But this is the process. So one more time, just mentally talking through it. We have a wireless card. We placed it into monitor mode. We went ahead and discovered the wireless network that we wanted to attack. And then we specified it, specifically choosing the channel, the BSS ID or the MAC address, right? And we set a capture file on this interface. We were looking at it here and this is what that looked like, right? We came through here and we said, okay, well, here's an associated uh, user and we're gonna go ahead and just kick that user off so we can grab this handshake, grab the handshake, took it, cracked it, we're in the network. It's, it's just as easy as that. Uh, WPA2 is a very insecure protocol if you are, uh, or unsecure protocol if you are uh, using weak passwords, it's easy money. So that is it for this video. That is it for this subsection. So we're gonna move on to the next subsection, which is going to be talking about legal documentation and report writing. So I'll catch you over there.